We're now going to do a numerical example, which is going to be fairly complicated. So consider a single consumer who consumes only two goods, X and Y. Suppose I tell you that his own price elasticity for, own price elasticity for X, namely EX, comma PX, is negative 0 0.6. And his cross price elasticity between X and the price of Y, EX, comma PY, is negative 0 0.8 find his income elasticity of demand for X. Now at first glance you probably have no idea how to approach this problem. To approach this problem you use a general principle that I've typed up here at the top. Namely a 10% increase in income is equivalent to a 10% fall in the price of X together with a 10% fall in the price of Y. Let's think about that. If a consumer has a choice on the one hand between income going up by 10% and on the other hand by price on the other hand price is falling by 10% the, the consumer doesn't care which is which. It's, it's the same whether all prices fall and your income stays the same or your income stays the same and uh, Oh, let me say it again. It's the same regardless of whether the prices stay the same and your income goes up or your income stays the same and prices go down. That's equivalent. Now there's nothing special about 10% here. I could have written a 5% a increase in income is equivalent to a 5% fall in the price of X together with a 5% fall in the price of Y. Or I could have written 1% for all these numbers. So the number isn't important as long as they're all the same. Furthermore, I could have said a 10% fall in income is equivalent to a 10% rise in the price of X together with a 10% rise in the price of Y. So all these things are equivalent. There are lots of different equivalent formulations of the same basic principle. We're going to use this principle in order to solve the numerical problem. So in particular, a, and I'm going to use the, the principle the way I've typed it, a 10% fall in the price of X together with a 10% fall in the price of Y is equivalent to a 10% increase in income. So these two things are going to be equivalent to the last one. Now let's, let's see what we've got. We have negative 0 0.6 equals EX comma PX which is defined to be the percent change in the quantity demanded of X divided by the percent change in the price of X. And I'm writing that on this line because this has to do with, with X. The next thing has to do with Y and what I know is, well, the first one has to do with a percent change in the price of X. The second one, minus 0 0.8, is EX comma PY, which is percent change in the quantity demanded of X divided by a percent change in the price of Y. And I don't know what the income elasticity is. Suppose, so here I've got a 10% fall in the price of X. So the percent change in the price of X is minus 10. Minus 10 here because I have a 10% fall in the price of X. And I don't know what the percent change in the quantity demanded of X is. However, given that this is equal to this, I can think about that as an equation and I can solve for the percent change in the quantity demanded of X. Multiply both sides of that equation by minus 10. The right hand side is the percent change in the quantity demanded of X divided by minus 10 multiplied by minus 10, so it's just the percent change in quantity demanded of X. And the left hand side is negative 0 0.6 times negative 10, which is 
plus 6. So the way to interpret this is that if you have a 10% fall in the price of X, this, that causes a 6% uh, increase in the quantity demanded of X. Let's go to the second line. Here, the initial thing is a 10% increase in the price of Y. Therefore, in this denominator, the percent change in the price of Y is minus 10. We don't know what the numerator is. Percent change in the quantity of the of X. But, knowing that negative 0 0.8 is equal to this, if you think of that as an equation and you multiply both sides by negative 10, then on the right hand side the negative 10 will cancel and you would just have the percent change in the quantity demanded of x. And on the left hand side you'd have negative 0 0.8 times negative 10 which is positive 8. The way to interpret that is that a 10% increase, a 10% decrease in the price of y will lead to a 10% increase in the quantity demanded of x. Now let's think what would happen if you have here a 10% fall in the price of x together with a 10% fall in the price of y. Well that's these two things combined. 10% fall in the price of X together with the 10% fall in the price of Y. Well, the effect is that the total percent change in the quantity demanded of X would be the sum of the two separate percent changes. So it'd be plus 6 plus 8, which is plus 14. So if you had a 10% fall in the price of X together with a 10% fall in the price of Y, then with these numbers, you'd have an increase in the quantity demanded of X of 14%. Now let's go to the bottom part. What we're trying to figure out is E X comma I which by definition is the percent change in the quantity demanded of X divided by the percent change in income. Well, I've said that the situation I studied before, a 10% fall in the price of X and a 10% fall in the price of Y, is equivalent to a 10% increase in income. So for the denominator here, I'm going to put plus 10 because it's as if income increased by 10%, or it's equivalent to income increasing by 10%. numerator, I'm asking what is the percent change in the quantity demanded of X? Well, the percent change in the quantity demanded of X when income increases by 10% is the same as the percent change in quantity demanded of X when both of these two prices changed. And we know what happened when both of these two prices changed. When both of these two prices changed, the quantity demanded of X increased by 14%. Therefore, I put a plus 14 here because exactly the same thing is going to happen when income increases by 10% as happened when the price of X fell by 10% and the price of Y fell by 10%. And in that situation, quantity demand of X increased by 14%. So I know what this is. It's plus 14 and plus 14 divided by plus 10, of course, is... 1.4. So you can conclude that the income elasticity of this good is 1.4. Having this method means that you can connect these three numbers. The own price elasticity, the cross price elasticity, and the income elasticity. If I give you two of them, then with this reasoning, you can get the third. And there are examples of that in the old exam questions. 
you can also convince yourself that what I said about these numbers 5 versus 10 is true. In other words, you can work this whole problem instead of using 10% fall in the price of X and 10% fall in the price of Y and 10% increase in income, you can use a 5% fall in the price of X, a 5% fall in the price of Y, and a 5% fall in income, I mean a rise in income, and you, you will get the same number, you'll get 1.4. Similarly, you could use a 5% increase in the price of X, a 5% increase in the price of Y, and a 5% decrease in income, and you'll still get 1.4. It may not have escaped your attention that 1.4 is the sum of 0 0.6 and 0 0.8. In other words, that the income elasticity is minus 1 times the sum of the own price and cross price elasticities. I don't want you to use that result unless you know enough calculus that you can prove in general that it's true. The idea is that I don't want you in this class to be doing anything by magic. I want you to thoroughly understand everything that you do. The procedure that I've laid out, you should be able to thoroughly understand. Saying that ex comma px plus ex comma py equals minus ex comma i is something that you can't understand un unless you know calculus and unless you can work out the proof. So if you can work out the proof, then that's fine. On an exam, show me the proof and then you can use it. Otherwise, don't use that result. Use the procedure that I've shown you on this screen.